Ever since, even before deep learning was a buzzword or something even many people were focusing on, Google was at the forefront, easily the company with the most faith and energy being put into neural networks, including through use in search results and linking content and all that, but also for things like a Google Voice Assistant and so on. In terms of deploying AI into the wild for the purposes of making exceptional user applications, Google was truly the leader. In terms of research, it also appeared Google was the overall leader in AI. Google authored the seminal Attention is All You Need paper, which came out in 2017 and really got the ball rolling for transformer models, arguably without really anyone even Google, <laughs> realizing what would come from it uh, for, for years. And then they also did BERT, a bi-directional encoder representations from Transformers kind of model architecture in 2019. Around this time, however, other companies began to sort of emerge in the large language models space, which are generally just big Transformers trained on text. And the leader in this space has turned out to be open AI, and by proxy, Microsoft, the sort of IBM of my generation's era. In mid-2019, Microsoft invested a bit over $1 billion into OpenAI, which came with Azure Compute Power for OpenAI as well, uh, to make use of for training models and all of that. A bit earlier, in late 2018, Microsoft had also acquired GitHub for $7.5 billion. At the time, people, even myself included, weren't really sure what to make of this acquisition. Like, what was Microsoft's interest really in open source? It was marketed as an investment into open source, but yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you really going for? Well, fast forward a bit to mid-2021, and GitHub Copilot is released as a sort of technical preview. GitHub Copilot is nothing more than a GPT-style model that is just simply trained on programming code. A lot of code. <laughs> uh, basically, all of GitHub. GitHub Copilot, if you're a programmer, is truly a life-changing piece of software for $10 a month. Most importantly, it works, and it works really well. It's a large language application that is just phenomenally applied to a sort of user setting. Not only are the suggestions really good, it's also very fast. Some Something that people probably most of the time don't even think much about is the speed and, and how important that is for usability, not just in programming, but in all aspects, including search. But making large language models produce predictions or do inference extremely quickly like this is a really tough challenge, especially to scale that out. One of the reasons Google was able to win the search engine game was its speed. And sure, results matter, but the silent killer of like any website or app is response time. In late 2022, OpenAI released the research preview for ChatGPT with a large language model paired with reinforcement learning based on human feedback or RLHF. OpenAI created a chatbot style AI, an application that can essentially just do and answer just about anything you wanted. And while answering doesn't necessarily mean it's right, right? It, it can often be wrong or coaxed into saying very silly things. There's no question that it's powerful and insanely addicting to use. So addicting that within two months, ChatGPT reached almost 600 million visitors and 100 million of those being unique visitors, make, making ChatGPT the fastest growing user application ever. <laughs> It was really at this point that people started to wonder, is like the age of a search engine over and are we now at the age of more like an answer engine instead? Obviously, this was of great concern for Google, the world's largest search engine, especially when basically Google's entire existence and empire is honestly tied to search. It all comes back to search. Yes, Google does a lot of other things besides search, but search is really the foundation of much of the ad revenue, both in terms of uh, ads in search, as well as data from search that is used in ads in other locations. Right now, Google dominates the search space with 85-ish percent of the total pie of search traffic. One thing to take note of, though, is 
this pie. Google Share is either stagnant or slowly declining despite being the default in many applications and in many browsers and phones and all of that. Uh, and the one search engine that appears to be gaining some steam here is in fact Bing, Microsoft's search engine. So when ChatGPT, the creation of OpenAI, of which Microsoft is a very large partner with, is so incredibly powerful, helpful, and addicting to use for things that you would have otherwise used search for, Google is probably extremely concerned about it, as the news of the Code Red suggests. I've seen people suggest also that this Code Red is really just like a clickbaity thing, but I honestly doubt that. If Google isn't extremely concerned about this, then they're simply just like not paying attention and they're asleep at the wheel and that's an even bigger problem. Continuing on into 2023, in January, news broke that Microsoft is putting in another $10 billion into OpenAI, bringing Microsoft's stake to 49%, along with Microsoft being set to earn 75% of all profits until Microsoft makes back its initial investment. And this also puts the valuation of OpenAI to $29 billion. As an aside, this deal seems extremely unfair, <laughs> both in valuation for a company that just produced the fastest growing application ever, <laughs> as well as the sort of like revenue split and Microsoft recouping their investment. Um, either way, though, from the perspective of Microsoft and Bing, this is a huge, huge, huge win. And really, when we look at companies like Google and Microsoft here, who has the most to win and who has the most to lose? Looking at it this way, at best, Google can really only hope to maintain where it is right now. It's not going to likely gain a whole bunch of users by changing to more of an answer engine approach. Uh, when people seek information online, they're already going to Google. It's unlikely that the total users doing search is likely to increase more than the population rate is already increasing. So at best, Google can just hope to maintain <laughs> where they are. At worst, they lose their entire business, <laughs> right? They go down and Google's valued at like 1.1 trillion at the time of my recording this. And that is after losing about 100 billion in the last few days. And we'll get to that in a minute. Now for Microsoft, <laughs> at best, Microsoft can hope to become the new leader in search and answer, earning them likely 100x or more on their investment. At worst, they stand to lose a total of $11 billion. <laughs> $11 billion versus $1.1 trillion. On February 6th, 2023, Google, in a blog post, outlined essentially their commitment to large language models and to trying to do what ChatGPT has done through their own variant called BARD, which is powered by Lambda, which we've heard much about. Uh, for example, someone who uh, used to work with Lambda accusing it of being sentient, possibly, uh, but really it's just a very large language model. Unfortunately, this blog post from Google isn't really anything of actual, like, substance, and in my honest opinion, reads more like a plead to investors to just please hold on for a little moment longer. <laughs> the next day, February 7th, Microsoft released a blog post outlining their plans for out uh, implementing a chat GPT-like technology into Bing. Again, this is just a research preview. It's not necessarily something of substance, but I will argue that being a 49% stakeholder in OpenAI um, and, and chat GPT already existing and already being deployed and scaled to 100 million unique users, but 600 million total users, um, it's just no question that Microsoft and OpenAI and ChatGPT has already done it. They've already, they've already achieved what is very, very hard and a very tough, challenging technological problem. I mean, this ChatGPT was a free, public, open demo that everyone could sign up for. So the fact that they were able to host this with, you know, minor outages, yes, they have outages from time to time, but again, it's free and everybody can just load up on this thing. The fact that they've scaled it out and it's still functioning uh, is really testament to they're getting it right. Unfortunately for Google, one other thing they did on February 6th was to create and share an ad for Bard, which contained a question about what discoveries came from that James Webb Space Telescope. 
And the answer, while looking quite nice and very confident, was factually incorrect because the JWST was actually not the first to take photos, for example, of exoplanets. Not only did the AI confidently share this information, Google themselves didn't even bother to fact check their own cherry-picked <laughs> example that they wanted to share with the world uh, to show off Bard. Because again, the public, it's not like this is just a random user is example of, oh, Bard screwed up. No, this was Google's like cherry-picked <laughs> example, and it wasn't right. Um, they didn't have to share this one, but they did. And it just kind of is testament to how sloppy and kind of how I think, you know, knock back on their heels Google is at the moment. <laughs> And again, there's no reason to think that ChatGPT could have not made this exact same mistake. It makes tons of mistakes just like this. People show examples all the time. That is that is a downside to models like this. They very confidently say things that sound true or sound good, but they're not. It's just a large language model. All it does is try to make text that sounds legit. So the problem is, though, that Google, again... <laughs> Google just has everything to lose. They desperately need to be first to market here with a really good um, application, uh, or at least not be later than maybe like a few months. But at the same time, they obviously can't rush this and then lose all their credibility. Bing, on the other hand, kind of has very little credibility to lose, right? They're, even if Bing lost all of its current customers, they still stand to gain the 85% coming over from Google. So it's just Bing can kind of be the more fun and quirky search engine and get away with it while it improves over time. Google can't. They just can't. So <laughs> the next few months or year or so is going to be really interesting to watch these companies just kind of trip over themselves to outdo each other. I'm totally not ready to say that Google has like lost and they're just going to die as a company, but they just have so much downside here and so much risk and pulling off winning this battle just simply puts them right back to where they were when they started it. They can't really get much more dominant. For Microsoft, this is a massive breath of fresh air for them as a company on the whole. They've got a product that just released and scaled to 600 million users in two months. Just that engineering feat alone is impressive and proves that they have the ability to actually do this correctly. All of that said, just like we can't really say Google has for sure lost, there's really no reason to believe that Microsoft will for sure win this either. Again, I think it's going to come down to things like trust, inference speed, and things like limitations. For example, one frequent complaint about ChatGPT is how much it's been restricted since its release. Even though it's just OpenAI and Bing and Microsoft, they still do have reputation to lose, and I still think there's room for a more uh, unlimited or unrestricted, so to speak, chat GPT-like answer engine to enter the space and really beat out everyone else purely just because it's more enjoyable to use and doesn't start so many responses with the dreaded, as a large language model, I cannot, and, or whatever, right? One such example of a new search or answer engine is something like you.com, where you can just go and chat and chat with an AI that's very much similar to ChatGPT, and it's sort of mixed with search results, and you as a user can kind of up and down vote answers to help improve it over time. But it definitely feels very ChatGPT-like, and at least for now, from my using it, I really do kind of like this application of it. Another example of another player is OpenAssistant.io, which is attempting to entirely open source and crowdsource a chat GPT-like AI that both is could be hosted or that you could even run yourself locally. Right now, things are just simply wild, and I expect... While some people recognize how big this all really is, I think many people are still just missing it. We are nearing the end of an era of search where you type a query and you have to click around and kind of read through websites and deal with all these clunky ads and stuff like that and maybe find what you wanted or change your query, go back. And instead, you're going to just be getting direct answers. For the first time in history, Google is seemingly behind the curve here. And that doesn't mean that Google has lost. It just is interesting to see this happen. And also, 
to see Google really kind of fumble here, <laughs> right? Um, again, with like the ad, for example, and they're just trying so hard to compete and market against ChatGPT, which ChatGPT has plenty of, of problems. ChatGPT is not ready in the slightest for prime time. It's just simply not. And for Google to just be stumbling over themselves to make all the same mistakes that Bing will for sure be making if they go ahead and just release it uh, before it's ready, uh, they're just, they're screwing up. They're making mistakes. And it's just kind of interesting to see how nervous Google really is <laughs> about all of this. And I mean, probably it's within good reason. They should be. <laughs> So anyways, like I continue saying over and over, these are very exciting times to be alive. It's fun to watch all of this and it's fun to just be so involved in AI and, and working in AI and like watching stuff like this uh, play out. I can't wait to continue playing and seeing what, what other people come up with in terms of chat GPT like things or even applications like you.com. I'm curious, very curious to see what happens with openassistant.io um, and any other players that come into this space. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's very entertaining to be watching this and it's definitely entertaining watching Google versus Bing, where for once in a very long time, it appears that Bing might actually have the upper hand, at least for now. If you've ever wondered and wanted to know more about how neural networks actually work, including the optimization and fitment, rather than just simply calling some method, then you might be interested in checking out the Neural Networks From Scratch book by myself and Daniel Kukewa. The book can be had in the form of an ebook PDF, softcover, or hardcover, and we ship for free worldwide. Also, the physical books just come with an ebook copy. All copies are in full color, which helps because there's a lot of code syntax highlighting and lots of charts and diagrams to help convey the principles. Also, almost all of those charts and diagrams have QR codes and links that take you to animations to help further illustrate the concepts. This is truly a real neural networks from scratch, teaching everything from the forward pass, calculation of laws, backpropagation, and optimization. The only math that you're expected to know coming in is basic algebra. The rest is taught by us in the book, step by step. Everything is shown and explained in the book first logically, then mathematically, then via raw Python code, no third-party libraries, and then finally optimized via NumPy. And this is for every step of the way, building and training actual neural networks for a fully fundamental understanding of neural networks and how they work from scratch. If at any point you're lost or confused, all copies of the book also grant access to a Google Docs version of the book where you can ask your questions in line with the actual text itself. This is an incredible project that I'm extremely proud of to share with you all. We've sold over 13,000 copies to students all over the world. If you're looking to take your knowledge of deep learning to the next level, or if you're just looking to start that journey, I can't imagine a better way. So to learn more and buy yourself a copy, you can head to nnfs.io.